What's up YouTube? Today we're going to make some abdominal and chest armor for Batman cosplay. Of course you can kind of cater yours for whatever you want. And I'm doing this in two pieces. This part here we're going to make first which is the lower part and that's your lower back. And this will go on you first. There's velcro here on each side to attach the sides. And these elastic straps that go over your shoulders. Kind of like suspenders just to help keep this in place. And then the next piece that goes to this is this top piece here, this top rig. And it is, of course, the chest area. And this is independent, so you can have some mobility, some movement. You can lean back, you can bend down, you can go side to side. And this, of course, is the chest piece. Uh, the shoulder pieces, these attach to your arms. This right here goes underneath your arm and has Velcro. And then on the back side of it, I just have some shoulder plates that I heated and scored and a base plate. And that's pretty much it. I am going to do probably some more detail work to this that I haven't done yet as far as scoring and things like that and heating and shaping. But this is the basic two build pieces that we're going to do in this video. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I made this Batman armor a while back. And here you can see the shoulders, which are very similar to what I did on the Punisher. And the back spine guard, the bottom, and then here to the front. So I have the chest, this armored abdominal area that goes all the way down basically to the crotch. Now, even if I cut this armored area down, it's solid. Uh, I can't bend over. I can't pick anything up if I drop it on the floor. Can't even really strike a very good Batman pose. It looks cool when I'm just standing there, but I have next to no no mobility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an all new chest piece. And there's videos on how to make one like this, and they're all very good. And I made this based off of those videos. However, for this video, I'm going to make one where the shoulder top piece and the chest piece. And these two shoulder pads are going to be one piece that's going to overlap with the abdominals and the lower back. Drop that on the floor there so you can get a good idea of what I mean. This is all solid. You can't move. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so for this build, you're going to need EVA foam, 5mm, uh, probably also 3mm and 2mm, but the main part is going to be all 5. As you can see, I have a lot sitting here, and I also have a whole lot more, just in case this isn't enough, but I think they should be enough. Mod Podge to seal the foam, Plastic dip to texture and seal the foam. Uh, you're going to need adhesives like contact cement, super glue, and hot glue writing tools, sharpies, a ballpoint pen, scissors, cutting mat. I'm also going to use some razor blades and exacto knives. Uh, I don't have it out here, but a heat gun as well. You're basically going to need a lot of stuff for this build because this is going to be a rather large build. I have a feeling I'm also going to be using some elastic and definitely some Velcro. But since I haven't made it yet, and whenever I go into a creative project, I don't necessarily have, like, oh, I'm going to use exactly this and exactly that. I usually start at the beginning, and as I go through it, I think to myself, mm, I was going to use this, but this might look better, or that might look better. So there's a good chance I may be using some pleather, and I'm certain I'm probably also going to be using possibly some craft fabric as well, which is super inexpensive. You can pick it up at any hobby store, like Joanne Fabrics, Pack of Tans, uh, Hobby Lobby is where I get mine. So yeah, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start on the abdominal and the lower back piece. Okay, so this is going to ultimately end up being the right side uh, chest piece. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start pattering out by hand and drawing all these. And what I'm going to do here, you notice the arrows, these two edges I'm going to cut straight. Uh, all the other edges here are going to be beveled. And what that means is instead of making a straight, even cut, 
you're going to have an angle either this way or this way. And I'm going to have an angle going this way in on all the cuts, except for these that are going to be straight. Okay, so I've cut up both of these pieces. You can see here how I have the angle, the beveled edge, going inwards. Uh, this edge here is flat, going back into a, about a 45 degree bevel. Same thing here on the bottom. On the front, of course, I left it straight and even. And how I got this was I just measured from the center of my chest over to the edge, and then I extended the piece a little bit uh, for several reasons. One, I'm going to heat and curve this somewhat. But what this represents here, this is going to glue on the bottom at an angle, and I'm going to trim off the excess. But before I start gluing any of this stuff together, I'm going to go through and flip this over and flip this upside down. And I'm using a ballpoint pen, I'm going to trace out a pattern of both, then I'm going to cut them out. And that'll make the opposite side. Alright, so I've cut out the left and the right. Next I'm going to glue these to the bottom. It's going to be at an angle though. I'm going to go ahead and glue that together and show you what that looks like. Alright, you can see I glued it here. And that's why I was saying I cut the angled edges. Because I wanted this to line up. I did I get a curve to it. And I've taken and stretched a little shape into it. Next I'm going to heat it and form it. And I'm going to start cutting the side pieces by tracing along the edge here. And I'm going to start gluing all that together. But first I'm going to heat it and I'm going to glue these two center pieces together. Alright, I glued them together in the center and looking pretty good so far. Next what I did was I laid this on a piece of scrap EVA foam, pressed this flat, drew along the edge. And I got this piece here. For the right side, I'm going to go ahead and glue on here, and I also made another one for the left. I'm going to go ahead and attach those. Okay, so now that I have glued both pieces together, I reinforce the back by gluing a piece of 3mm uh, scrap EVA foam on it. And that was also to help it hold this shape here in the center. And now I've cut out this little V piece. I'm going to have protruding from the middle. And I'm going to glue that on so that it looks like this here and I've also cut out a couple of pieces here that are going to go here in this outside area here I'm going to go ahead and glue those on next all this stuff I've been gluing together using contact cement Okay, I've got those glued on, and I heated them and shaped them. And the way I shape this up and the method behind it is I just kind of place it up to my actual chest because I wanted to have, like, that curve and conformity, even though it's going to be out somewhat from my chest because I'm going to need room for this underpiece for the abdominal area. And what I did here was I found the center of the foam, and I drew a straight line. And I measured the length from where this stops on my chest down to where my utility belt is going to be on my Batman costume. And I took that length, and that is what made the length of this. You can see I scored the foam. I'm going to go ahead and cut this shape out. All right, now that I've cut out my basic shape, I also went ahead and traced it onto some 3 millimeter EVA craft foam and next I'm going to start cutting out my individual abdominal pieces, flipping them over and tracing them out and cutting them on the other side as well. Alright now that I've cut out all of my individual abdominal pieces I went ahead and went over and traced them out on this one as well. I'm going to go ahead and cut them out next all right, all my pieces are cut, and I did go through and number them on the back side so that I know which is which. Don't get them confused, because next what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start heating and shaping these. Okay, so I've already started to put some shape and form and curvature into these, because this is going to be 
you know, going around my stomach. And see, these are still flat. And these have the curve. And it's pretty easy to cheese this. If I lightly heat the backside and put a lot more heat on the front, it already starts to give it a natural curve. And then I just kind of pull it into shape with both hands. I'd repeat that on both sides. All right, I cut out my underpiece and I left some excess here on the edges so I can begin to attach the rest. And I've already started to contact cement these on. I did take a little heat to put some curvature to it and I have it on a sleeping bag here, <laughs> much like I did with the Punisher armor build video because I don't have a mannequin. And I'm just using some contact cement and I'm gluing all of my shaped pieces on starting from the top and working to the bottom. Uh, if you have trouble eyeballing stuff like this out, you may want to put some guidelines and maybe some hash marks. I actually, this is going to sound weird, but I actually have a worse time trying to do the hash marks and the guidelines than if I just eyeball it up. So I guess it all depends on you as a person. All right, I've got most of them glued on. And I wanted to point out a couple things here. One, I don't put any contact cement in the middle. I only put it around the outside edge of the area and the piece. Always leave the center totally just dry. And that's to help retain the curvature this way on it. Otherwise, it can go flat and it's going to look pretty dull and plain. And you, you want to have as much definition as possible. Another thing is always wear a respirator. And use contact cement in a well-ventilated area. All right, now that those are all glued on, I'm gonna start patterning out pieces that are gonna go on the side here. But first, I just wanna talk about this a little bit. You'll notice I left some space in between them, and that's in case you have to bend over. You'll have the slightest bit of give up and down it, and trust me, the slightest bit of give is a whole world of difference compared to what I showed you in the beginning that's totally stiff. And I'm going to start next with some pieces that are going to come up the side here. And this right here, I'm not going to work on the rest of this part yet. And this is just kind of a guide as to where the top and the bottom pieces were going to be and sit and fit and look. And I wanted to make sure that they all, you know, kind of matched up with the size and shape that I wanted. And once again, with these two being separate when you're wearing them, you'll be able to rotate your torso somewhat, stretch up, bend down. I'm excited to try this on and get it finished. All right, so I took another piece of the 3 millimeter EVA foam, and I put some contact cement along the edges of both and stuck them together. And I used a reinforcing strip of 2 millimeter on the back. And what I did next was cut a couple of blocks, little rectangles of the 5 millimeter EVA foam. And I'm now going to draw my side patterns. You can draw those however you want, but of course you're going to see how I do it. All right, I've taken and cut some strips out of my two pieces here, one for each side. And I'm going to go ahead and contact, cement them to this, starting from the top, working my way down. All right, I got all my side pieces curved and glued on. I also went through and just trimmed off some of the excess. And there is some excess uh, here on the bottom as well that I trimmed off. And yeah, I think this is going to look pretty good once I get it all together. Now, this here is going to have Velcro on the back of it. And it's going to attach to the back piece, which is going to wrap around here. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making the back piece. Okay, to start off the back piece, I cut out these pieces for the spine guard. How wide you're going to want this depends on how tall and broad you are. Uh, this is six inches. And I put a line down the center and cut out all these pieces. And I'm going to glue them so they overlap like they are here. And to do that, I'm going to use some contact cement. All right, so I glued all these together and I put a reinforcing strip down the center and also cut this little rabbit ear, rabbit ear piece here 
because this is where my elastic is going to come up. And the elastic is going to come up off here. And it's going to go around and attach into, into uh, this piece here in the front, kind of like some suspenders do. So that's why that piece is there. And next, what I'm doing is I cut two pieces to the same width as this because these are going to be glued onto here and they're going to curve around and velcro to the front part here okay i've got my flaps on here that are going to come around and velcro to this but just to make sure this is good and sturdy since this is only a two millimeter piece of eva foam i'm gonna put this down here and i'm just gonna start just putting a little bit of hot glue in these gaps where I contact cemented it just to make sure it gets down in that crack. And it's really going to hold this tight like that. All right, I've taken my glue gun and I've sealed it off on the outside and also put a bead along the inside. And sealed everything off really good to make sure this doesn't come apart. Next, I'm going to start cutting out some pieces that I've also scored with an X Acto knife to, from working from the spine guard out, start gluing on here. All right, I've taken some three millimeter pieces here and glued them to the inside of this black piece so that I have something to put the Velcro on here. And I also cut out a couple panels out of some three millimeter EVA foam, scored them a little and heated them. Cut the pattern out the same on both sides and the back. And I'm gonna glue on a couple more accent panels. I'm gonna move on to the Velcro. All right, I have glued on some of the other pieces just to fill in here. And I used some yellow. This piece here is two millimeters black. And a yellow bar here. The yellow bar represents where the padding is going to stop and the Velcro is going to start. The Velcro is going to be on this end piece here. That's where I'm going to glue it on. Oh, I don't have enough Velcro, so I have to run to the store. I also put a piece of the two millimeter foam on the inside here, right at this bend, just because there is a gap where there's not really anything but just the two millimeter. And if you're wondering why I didn't use thicker foam, I like to just use thinner foam and then layer it up. Part of the reason for this, you notice I put a bend in this piece. It helps to hold the, 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 the piece's shape, but still remains flexible depending on what kind of adhesive you use. If I want a stiffer hold, I will use something like super glue. For softer bends where I want the shape to be there, but I want it to still be flexible, I'll use Loctite spray adhesive or I'll use contact cement. On this, I have been using contact cement. Okay, I'm going to go grab some Velcro, come back and put that on. All right, everybody, I went out and got some Velcro and went ahead and Velcroed that on. And this is industrial strength Velcro. And it does have an adhesive on the back of it. There's a little clear thing you peel off to stick the adhesive to it. I have had it come off of things, mostly just under extreme heat and extreme dry or maybe extreme heat and humidity. The... Adhesive will loosen sometimes, so I did coat the EVA foam with some contact cement before I stuck it on. I sealed it off with the bead of hot glue and stuck some EVA foam in the back of the strips here. And now that the back is done, I'm going to go ahead and put some Velcro on the abdominal piece. And for the abdominal piece, I am putting the fuzzy side of the Velcro. And instead of going widthways, like I did with the the hook part of the hook and loop i'm going to put the fuzzy stuff on here i'm going to run it lengthways and the velcro that i picked up today i bought at just cost cost space supply and if you're not familiar with it or in town here where i'm at you can always check them out on the web they do have an online support uh, uh store it's just cost cosplay supply.com J-U-S-T-C-O-S-C-O-S-P-L-A-Y-S-U-P-P-L-Y.com. All right, I've got my 
fluffy side, the soft side of the Velcro glued into the inside of the front plate. And next what I'm going to do is I have a couple of strips of elastic here. And I'm going to take these and I'm going to glue them on this back part here. I'm going to glue them on the inside, on the back of this, and they're going to come up over my shoulders and they're going to attach to the abdominal piece in the front. So first I'm going to start by gluing them onto the back of this here. All right, so now that I have these straps glued on the back here, I put this on my body and pulled the straps over, measured them, cut them to length, and now I'm going to go ahead and glue them into here on the front. All right, I have the straps glued on here. I need some hot glue and some super glue. Glued them all with super glue, went back through, put some hot glue over it after I had time to dry. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the bottom piece. Uh, I may put something to represent rivets in between these plates here and here and here. Also down through the center. Maybe some stuff on the back. Like I say, decoration's up to you. I'm going to check the inside seams here and see if I need to seal any of them up with hot glue or not. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this bottom piece. Now I'm going to go on and start making the rig that's going to have the top piece which whenever you put it all together will overlap, like I say, so you can have some mobility and turn side to side. And the shoulders, there's going to be the chest piece. There's going to be some pieces back here for the shoulder blades and a center piece. There's going to be a strap that's going to come around and Velcro into this, much like this bottom piece did into the front piece. And you're also going to have some outer shoulder pads that are going to go over and are going to hook to straps that are going to run from here to the back of the rig. All right, so let's get started on all that. Okay, so before I go any further, reinforcing the back of this here, or putting on the straps that are gonna to connect to the shoulder pieces or any of that stuff, I went ahead and put on the clips here that go to my Batman cape. My Batman cape I did not buy, it was made by my girlfriend. And I don't have a tutorial video on that. And depending on how you're going to hook your cape in, maybe it goes around your neck, maybe it doesn't. When I made the first build, I didn't put any room for this. And I ended up having to put both of them here in the center. And the cape didn't fit right, and it looked kind of goofy. Uh, so yeah, I want the cape to actually connect at a spot that makes more sense. So I went ahead and super glued some nylon strapping together with my clips and glued them to this with some super glue and then globbed some hot glue over it just to help hold it all in place. And yeah, that way whenever everything here is all together, I will have a nice spot for my cape to attach on both sides. Okay, so this piece I made out of 5mm foam and part of the reason that I did that instead of using anything thicker is because I had to allow for these straps. But the reality is Whenever I make pieces that are going to connect to the back and the sides, I'm going to have to pad this so it sticks out a little bit. If I have it flush, it's going to rub really, really bad. So that's one of the things I need to keep in mind, is that both this front and the rear pieces don't end up smashing into any of this stuff. I'm going to have it out from my body just enough that I have some mobility whenever I'm moving. Okay, and for some of the areas like the strapping and whatnot, I got this roll of EVA foam at Just Cause Cosplay Supply, and it was only about $20. There's a significant amount here on this roll. And I'm going to use this thicker EVA foam for the shoulder pads that are going to go on my arms, the shoulder blade covers on the rear, and also the strapping that runs from here and here on the chest piece over my shoulders to the back as well. I took and cut out a rough shape out of some regular old computer paper. This is meant to be the left piece. Uh, for what I want the shoulder plates that are going to go on the back that are going to cover my shoulder blades and I cut those out and heated them gave them a little bit of shape and then I cut out this edge piece which is going to go on the outside edge Flipped these over, cut out two more, and this forms my patterns for all this. Next, I'm going to glue these on the edge with some contact cement. And you'll notice that all these are cut at a bevel, going inwards. 
Okay, I'm going to glue those two together. All right, I've taken my shoulder pieces and glued these outside edges on them. I haven't trimmed them up yet, but I did go through and put a little bead of hot glue just to make sure they stay in place. And these are going to be the ones that are going to be directly on your upper back, covering your shoulder blades. These other ones I've gone ahead and cut out. I made some patterns once I measure the length from top of my shoulder down here to my bicep and stop before I actually got to my elbow because you're going to need to be able to flex and move. And I took that measurement and cut two pieces that are shaped like this. Of course, you can cut any of this stuff, whatever shape you want depending on whatever you're going for and cut these into the thicker EVA foam roll and cut the edges beveled because next I'm going to glue these together at an angle and these are going to be the top parts of the shoulder pieces that attach to my arm. All right so now that these are all glued together I have a nice angle this is going to be the top of the shoulder this is going to be going down onto your arm and what I did was I took and drew out the angle, starting with making a line on this side here, and then working the piece over and making the second line. From there, I just drew a gradual half moon and then cut out uh, two of them. I still have two left to cut out. And the two that I cut out, I uh, put, used the heat gun and put some curvature to on both of those. Okay, and that is so that I can glue them to this and they'll match up and have some rounded shape. So next I'm going to go ahead and do that. And well, before I do that, though, I want to point out that I did cut this on a beveled edge and I did do a fair amount of sanding on both of these to get them to line up as best as I could. All right, now that both of these are fully glued together and sealed them off with some hot glue inside, I now have all the main pieces for the upper rig, which is the chest piece here that'll go in front of the abdominal area. And then these rear pieces are going to be in the back of the rib. They will be joined by straps to the front piece. And then you also have the shoulder pieces that'll go up over on your shoulders to your biceps. All right, so I cut out a couple of straps and I contact cemented them to the back of this, reinforced it with a strip of EVA foam and some hot glue. And then I figured out where I wanted them to meet in the back and I simply glued them together. And now you have your shoulder piece that's gonna go over your shoulders. And next, I'm gonna have my fiance mark on here where these shoulder blade covers are going to go, and I'm going to go ahead and glue them on. All right, so I have my girlfriend mark on here where these go, and I glued them in place. And I had her make a line at the top, put a couple of lines through it as well, so I knew where to put it. Okay, and now next, I kind of have this dead space here, so I'm going to fill this in with a little uh, square piece so that I did some scoring on, heated the foam so it spread open. And the final thing I'm going to do is put Velcro and strapping from here to the back pieces. And I'm going to start reinforcing this front chest piece. All right, so I took some nylon strapping and I glued on the shoulder pieces here. And I use the nylon strapping because that way I can have some pretty full range of movement. Uh, I do still need to put some straps that are going to go around my bicep to the back of my arm and Velcro in the back. But you now, for the most part, this is starting to look a lot more complete. I also took and put some padding in here to raise this up off my chest. Put that piece here on the back. And next, I'm going to glue some pieces that are going to go from the back shoulder blades up to the front. And I'm going to have a Velcro piece up here. All right, so I got my side straps glued on here. They're glued with contact cement to the back. And then I did take and reinforce them with some hot glue. You can see a bead right there that I put on to make sure that it doesn't move. I did the same thing over on the other side. And these straps are gonna come around and I'm gonna have the soft part of the Velcro here. 
and I'm going to have a strip of five millimeter foam I'm going to have coming off the end of this that is going to have the hook part of the Velcro on it. And that's how it's going to attach there. Alrighty, then the shoulder rig is looking pretty good. Uh, I've got the side piece here. I glue this black piece of 5mm foam with Velcro on the back. That's how the chest attaches to the sides. Shoulder pieces are on. The last couple things I'm going to do before I try this on is I have a strip of pleather that I got off of a chair that I took. Uh, it was sitting out back, discarded at a restaurant. The legs are broken, so I took the pleather off of it. And I'm going to put those strips in through here, glue it solid to the back, and then be able to attach it with Velcro here in the front. And do that on both of these. I'm also going to glue on a few armor accent pieces. And I'm going to try it on. All right, so here it is. Now that I've tried it on, uh, I am able to actually move about in this since this upper piece does move independent of the bottom. And I can crouch down, turn to the side, lift up, bend over, actually do things that I literally could not do in the other one because it was all one solid piece. And there's literally no mobility whatsoever. And that pretty much wraps it up for part one, just a basic build. In part two, we're going to do seam filling with some silicone on some of the different seams that are exposed here. We're going to make the bat symbol. It's going to go on the chest. The reason why I didn't put it on this build is this is going to be cut and textured separately and then glued on. Then we're going to do the sanding and seam filling and also texturing and painting. So stay tuned for part two. I hope you enjoyed part one. I hope this gives you guys like some different ideas on how to make your EVA foam armor. And one thing I'm not sure if I pointed out in the video, the reason why these shoulder pieces are so square, if you watch the Batman, or sorry, if you read the Batman comic books, you'll notice a lot of times the cape has this very squared off look. And the other build, I built them curved. You can do that. You can do whatever you want. I just wanted to have that very square shouldered armored Batman look. And the where the cape's going to come out is here. It's going to flow back over the shoulders, so yeah, I can't wait to try that on and finish this texture it and get it all ready for the next convention. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it gave you some ideas and was helpful. And as always, if you like this, please leave a like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more builds.